It has been 30 years since the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention reported the first AIDS cases. HIV has gone from being a death sentence to a disease that is manageable with medication, though drug makers have had to work to stay ahead of the virus, which mutates and can work up a resistance to drugs. There's still a long way to go in HIV prevention. For more on this, we are joined by Dr. Robert Gallo, who is credited with co-discovering the HIV virus as the cause of AIDS back in 1984. He is currently the director of the Institute of Human Virology at the University of Maryland. He joins us on the phone from Brussels. Dr. Gallo, welcome to Bottom Line. Pleasure to have you on. Thank you. It's nice to be with you. But Dr. Gallo, when you and Luc Montagnier of the Pasteur Institute co-discovered the AIDS virus, could you have imagined that some 30 years later a cure for the disease still hasn't been found? Yes, I could because it's um, a retroviral infection, first of all. And uh, I, I'll comment on that in a moment, but you, you must know that we had no therapy whatsoever for any virus um, ever in the history of medicine until HIV. And we have some rather effective therapy for HIV now. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have guessed that it would have been exceedingly difficult to have any therapy. Prevention, yes. What do we have for other viral diseases? We have nothing or we have right. a vaccine. I would have anticipated we would have succeeded by now right. with a vaccine, but I'm really happy that we've got good therapy. Sure, we want a cure, and sure, we have ideas toward a cure, right. but uh, I answered your question. I would have anticipated it would have been exceedingly difficult. Do well, Dr. Gallo, the UN program on HIV AIDS is out with a study calling for increased funding for the early treatment of people with the virus. And the head of the agency says the funding could reduce the risk of HIV transmission by 96 percent. Given the limited resources that countries have right now, who would pay for the funding, the public sector, the private sector, or a combination of the two? Well, you asked me a question that you're more expert on than I am. And one thing I've learned is don't talk about what you don't know. I don't know where the money could come from from that, but I agree with the conclusion. The conclusion, by the way, was obvious a long time ago. We've known that drugs can block the transmission of HIV from mother to child, haven't we? Ever since we got effective drugs by 19... Well, effective drugs began in 1986 with the breakthrough by Dr. Sam Broder of the National Cancer Institute, my colleague. Right. And then with Burroughs welcome. Then by 1995, the pharmaceutical industry added many more drugs that in combination made some effective therapy. So you know you can block mother-to-child transmission. You know you can protect healthcare workers that are exposed. So you know you can uh, diminish transmissibility if you uh, treat infected people early, you would right. lower the possibility of them transmitting it elsewhere. Yeah. But And so you'd have to be able to determine who's infected. Well, we've had a blood test uh, since 1984, and it's been available to the world since 1985. Yeah. So with a combination of the two, yeah. But who's paying for it? I don't know. Dr. Gallo, if I might ask, what is Big Pharma's role? You mentioned the pharmaceutical companies. Is it to make a profit or to find a cure? Well, I mean, you know, that's... I wouldn't imagine. That's as variable as we have variations in any specialty in any field, including uh, media. I, I, I know for certain dedicated people in the pharmaceutical industry who dream of things like a cure and who are high, high level people. Uh, I was just with Elaine Meru from the Meru Foundation who owns several biotech companies. All he wants to do is see at the end of his life that he's brought something that helps people in developing nations. I mean, right. he's so sincere, I can't tell you. But uh, you know, and I know, there are other people uh, in fields, including in the pharmaceutical industry, that um, are thinking the bottom line, profits for the shareholder. The pharmaceutical industry has indeed lowered the prices dramatically and for developing nations. Uh, and they should have some credit for developing many of the drugs we now use. I'm talking about even the basic science. Yeah, a lot's done at universities. Yes, uh, a lot was done at NIH, but they too contributed. But of course, uh, you hope every one of them will be uh, dedicated people to doing good for the world. Dr. And, and, and Dr. Gallo, I'm sorry, in our, in our last minute, if I might ask, where are we now in terms of drug cocktails, life expectancy, and quality of life for people with HIV? I'll tell you what I see and what I believe. Our institute, the Institute of Human Virology, is involved in the care of over 500,000 people in Africa, Haiti, and Guyana. 550 some odd thousand people and 6,000 in Baltimore. 
the drug availability, when it's available, and it's not available to everybody in all, in all developing countries, makes a dramatic difference. Instead of, as you put it, sure death sentences, it means you know, lots of morbidity, a lot of suffering. It means they can live reasonably normal lives. Life expectancy is impossible to say it'll be perfect. Yes. But clearly, people are living to ripe ages with HIV infection now that they never could think of right. before. Yeah, right. we'd like a cure and get rid of the drugs. Dr. Robert, working on it. I hope it happens. Dr. Robert Gallo, he's credited with co-discovering the HIV virus. He is currently director of the Institute of Human Virology at the University of Maryland, joining us on the phone from Brussels. Dr. Gallo, thank you for your time. We appreciate it.